Today's guest is from Lakeland, Florida, and went to the University of Florida. He won the S. He won an SEC championship and a national championship a year later. He was a freshman All-American in track and a part of the four by one hundred meter relay national championship team in two thousand ten. He was also All-American after your in your third year that year too. He was selected fifth round in the 2012 NFL draft by the Pittsburgh Steelers, bounced around the NFL for a couple of years, then headed north to the Montreal Alouettes, where we were teammates for a short time. Made his, he made his name for himself with the BC Lions, where he led the CFL in total combined yards with 2,945 after leaving BC for Toronto. Now he is back in BC, and I mean wearing this BC clothing today. Welcome to the show. The Rain Man, Chris Rainey. What's up, brother? What's up, what's up, dog? Thanks for having me, man. Hey, thank you for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told my dad, I said, uh, I said, uh, Chris Rainey's my podcast this week. He was like, that's the fast one, right? So yeah, he he pretty fast. When when did you know you were that fast? Like, were you uh, like well, I had a dog for 15 years. We used to play tag all the time. That was my only best friend I had, only friend I had growing up. At that you had a dog time. playing tag with a dog? Yeah, that was my dog. They, <laughs> my dog, my friend, she was everything to me. Um, <laughs> Wait, her, so you played her, tag with your dog? Yes. How do you play tag with your dog? You know how uh, dogs chase you or you throw the ball and stuff like that? I had a dog that we played tag like. She'll chase me while I chase her, all that kind of stuff. So man, I'm talking about ate everything I ate. I fed her. We ate on the same thing. I man, we did everything together besides sex. I ain't that one of them people. <laughs> <laughs> what what happened to your dog? Oh, uh, got taken away. Um uh it was a neighborhood called Lake Ridge. Uh I one of my friends' brother, I told him, do not pull, because you don't pull a dog's tail, period, point blank. No. So he pulled, I told him, do not do it. He pulled the tail. Lucky she didn't bite him, but she scratched him in the face. He cried. What, I don't know what he told the mama at that time. The mm -hmm. mama called something. Then my, my grandma called me at the time and said, "Um, you got to bring, my dog's name was Sugar Baby at the time, too. And that's who I named her. Um, Sugar Baby. She called me and said, bring the dog to the house, the dog people here. I said, what? So I walked home, hid behind this building with my dog. I see the dog people at the front. So I'm like, oh, jump. So I gave my dog a hug and kiss just in case she get taken or something. So I gave a hug and kiss, told her to go home. She went to the front porch. And they took her. Now the last time I ever seen them. What kind of dog years, was it? A child. Did that did that change anything for you? Like inside? Did that just change oh, you? I, I still have dreams of that dog. Everything. I wish <laughs> I I don't know if I I think I got one picture of her. I think. I don't I gotta relook at it again if I do or not. Because I had her when I was a puppy. I mean when she was a puppy and I was a baby. And we grew up together and all this stuff. So, yeah, I still dream about her. Best friend ever. <laughs> it's uh, three things I look into football. But when I predict football, my grandma, my dog, and God. That's it. Yep. And but the answer question with the speed, first grade, my grandma. And my dog used to walk me to the bus uh, stop. It was like probably two stop signs down from the crew we living at across the street from the park. It's a German Shepherd at this at these people house right by the bus stop. Um, and it's tied up because back in the day, you know how dogs jump the fence, uh, yeah. break the chain, and all that kind of stuff. But you be prepared when you do because you already know. Anything can happen any given any given day. So I get home from school, get off the bus, start walking. The German Shepherd always barking at whoever, whatever, whoever walked by. So one day this joker broke the chain. 
when I say I was gone, like me, like uh, so, like Benny the Jet Rodriguez. Yeah, I was going so fast. The the German Shepherd he stopped and just turned around. That's when I realized I was fast. <laughs> Cause you know German Shepherd's fast. Yeah. So aren't they like yeah. wolves or something? They could be, but I know they fast as hell. That's why, and they smart as hell too. You know That's why all the police always get them anyway. So. Did you um did you chase rabbits? No, chase squirrels and cats. Can you catch a squirrel? You ever caught a squirrel? No, but uh lucky my dog did because got lucky because the squirrel hit the fence. And dog caught it. But chickens, we chase chickens all the time. They was hard to catch, but my dog always caught them. And cats. But it was at that time I was vicious, so my dog was eating cats, baby cats, and all. It just <laughs> yeah. You should write you know? like a cartoon about you and your dog in the in the childhood stories about hey, you and man, your dog. What? Oh my god! Oh my god! Did you cry when you lost your dog? Man, what? I cried for three weeks straight. Three weeks you know straight. Stop. I don't like pets for that reason. <laughs> you know, people always say they love pets, but pets just don't live long enough. Like the life expectancy no, of a pet, you know, usually is about 12 to 15 years, mostly. They they don't, depending your, um, who at the household. Yeah. And plus, I feel like, I always tell everybody this, the animals that get fed table food from the household always live longer. Mm. They trying to give these dogs these damn food, what Walmart or what they see on TV. No, feed them table food, just like like we eat. I guarantee they live long. What do you <laughs> have you had any other pets since that dog? Mm -mm. I've been thinking for the last five years because I got kids and they've been talking about it. And... <sighs> so you so you just don't want one because of the the emotional scar of how you lost the first one. Oh, uh, you just don't want to get connected to another pet. No, it ain't that it just me moving in the new house and all these dogs shedding. It's just hard to find a dog that don't shed at all. Yeah, yeah that's because I heard it's a couple of them that don't shed, but they ugly as hell. <laughs> so, what you been doing to stay in shape? Um, I live obviously four days a week and I always train like I'm still in college, but my, my conditioning and running always be basketball. I don't do no football stuff besides flat football, obviously, because tournaments and stuff. But other than that, my, all my cardio is basketball. All your cardio is basketball. You don't do, That's it. You, you live four days a week. You don't post any videos online of you working out either. Mm, That's no. You're rare. You're like on rare, time I, a lot of people do. On time I did post that, or whatever, when I was um, training with Chris Burko up there, yep. and we were living up there at that time for the two years, and that's that. Other than that, now ain't no reason for it. your body gonna tell you what you do. How do you keep the speed over time? It's been how long since it's been you've been in college? What eight years? My graduated two thousand eleven. Nine years. <laughs> Nine years. Well, I graduated two thousand eleven. Yeah. 2012 was your last year. I think you won the championship. Yeah, 2012, you uh, you got drafted. So 2011 was your last college year. And I graduated 2011 in December, right before it turned 2012. So yeah, 10 years. Damn. About to be 10 years December come. But, you know, How do you keep the speed that long? Uh, it ain't all the way there, but it's... Just keep doing the same thing. You know how, because you know college with the worst training and hardest yeah. training ever. <laughs> you know, so you still season. do that. You can push yourself to that training, though. You no, can, you, can you go in the weight room and push yourself there. You definitely can. And um, because sometimes I'll be thinking, should I do some track training, too? Because track training will help all you, the flexible, get all the, it just stay flexible, basically. Yeah. I did, I did yoga for like, I've done yoga now for about 20 years, 19 years. 
You never got any yoga or anything? I I did a couple times. I just I'm just ain't flexible for that chunk. That chunk hurt. You gotta hot yoga is good, but you got you gotta push yourself. That That bitch hot. What? (laughs) (laughs) Dude, you're from Florida. Man, I, I remember the first time I walked into hot yoga and it was like uh what 90 degrees and, and like 85% humidity in the room. I was like, man, I'm home without the sun. Like yeah. this is good. And but the thing is with yoga and hot and hot yoga, you gotta stay focused too. Yeah. You can't stay focused. <laughs> Before I had a girlfriend, I couldn't stay focused. <laughs> So what would they say? Stay stay away from a environment you can't handle. Dude, you, let's talk about your Instagram account. Some of the videos you be posting on Instagram. Like, what's up with that? Like your toenails. Let's start with your toenails. It's been Why like haven't that. you cut your toenails? Oh, they grow so damn dog. No, you don't understand, boy. These my fingernails and toenails. I get it from my grandma and my granddaddy. They, if you see they jump, you be like, "Oh my god!" I see why he jump was like that. <laughs> Man, they grow so fast, it's ridiculous, dog. And then I just end up forgetting. That's why I be having my girl, like when she'll see it, she be like, "You need your own toenails done, all that kind of stuff," or something like that. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I do it myself, but I let my girl do it most of the you time. Go, you don't go get no pedicures or nothing. We'll uh, we'll do. Family st- stuff it uh, every once in a while. Just go get the toes done. How they look now? How the fingers look? Hold on, hold on. All right, can you? Oh yeah, can. You... Oh, that ain't half bad. <laughs> look way better than that Instagram picture that you showed. I'm like, man, this dude fast and he don't take care of his feet. <laughs> oh, cause they they start wrecking. When I, I'm trying to tell you, man, if you see my grandma stuff, oh my god, her toenails god. wrap, her fingernails too, Mm-mm. naturally her, her too, nails, huh? Her, her nail was like, and won't cut them for nothing. But hey, that just say they when when you see stuff like that, they what old people say, you are nice and healthy. How how much longer you plan on playing football? I'm trying to be the Tom Brady of the pocket. My goal is to play the 40, but I think probably about three more, four. That's what my mind telling me, but my goal is to play the 40. With everything going on with the, yeah, with everything going on with the COVID though, does that affect, how do you feel going back after missing a whole season? Like, do you feel like re-energized? Like, do you feel like you could play actually longer now because you did sit out a whole year without playing? Or do you feel like you missed a year of playing? Oh, I'm going to be unstoppable because I'm going to be playing like I'm 21 again because that whole year one, two, all the nits and bruises, all was out of your body. You just got a nice, healthy, perfect body perfect like scratch. you used to be doing. Yeah, you know how it is. So it's going to be definite, and it's definitely going to tell on a lot of people too because they're going to see if you in shape or not in shape. Do you train with anybody there? Like when you're when you're training or do you train by yourself? No, I train Because you've always myself. been like a loner. I always train myself. I don't trust nobody. What What is there to trust when you train with somebody? No, I'm just saying because I know what the – because, you know, I trained at Florida, and um, that's what we did all our stuff at. Just like I said, I trained like I'm still in college. So all the stuff we did in college, all the bones, all the muscles in your body, every every part of your body, like, I, I don't know. I just trust myself. I don't know. That's probably oh, so you're why. saying you don't you don't, you don't even train with a trainer, you just no. know what you want to accomplish and you go out there and get it done. Yeah, and I know what to do and all that stuff. That's why I'm see. I couldn't do I'm, it when I'm nice I and done. I'll be a speed trainer when I'm done. You know, so my mentality was, um, I had a trainer, my personal trainer, and you know that's props to him for making me who I was because there were days I'd be so drunk and I'm like, dude, I ain't gonna make it today. And he he was like, he was like, all right, see you in 30 minutes. I go up there, be throwing up outside. He just made me work. And it, and it almost seemed like he wanted me to work harder when he knew that I wasn't a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So he pushed yeah. me every day uh during the offseason, you know, three, four days a week. 
Uh, it was usually three days a week, and then we added in a conditioning day, that fourth day where we get up to about eight. Where we get up to about two thousand yards in, in sprints, right? Mm. So, but we did it just like you run regular plays. So I'd start on the goal line, and he'd walk out ten. So I'd sprint a ten, and then he might walk out twenty, and I sprint a twenty, and it's play clock, so twenty seconds between each sprint. He might walk mm. out fifty, and I sprint to fifty, and then ten, and then five, and then. So we do that up and down till halfway. We started about, we usually start around eight, uh, 1600. So after your 800 or the last hundred from seven to 800 was 15 seconds, like no huddle. And then after that, we got a five minute break and then we did the second half, right? Yeah. So that, that, that got me in good shape because it was like, all I have to do is learn to recover between each action. So if I run a 10 yard out, I can come back to the huddle, recover in 20 seconds and go run my next route. And it got mm-hmm. you running that five yard route, running that 10 yard route, running a 20 yard route, doing this. And because to me, being in shape is being able to recover from one event to the next event. Yeah. That's why basketball is hard as hell when for a football <laughs> player, boy, because it, it is nonstop. It, Are you good, though? You got a jumper? You play defense or you just hustle a lot? No, I got all of them. All uh, I play full court press. They get mad about it. You know, and it's only pick up basketball, but I just working on my cardio. That's why I do it. Full press, offense, defense, a little defense, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm fast at the same time, so I don't really have to do much but shoot past my score layup. That's it. How how good are you at one on one basketball? No, it'll be quick because I don't do much. It just run past you and do a layup. That's it. It's nice and easy. I got. I, I'm. I'm. I have some for you coming soon. I got some for you coming soon. If you're a good one-on-one basketball player, with a ten it's million dollar prize too. You lying? One hundred percent. It's a. T- it's. It's somebody I'm partnering with. I don't want to. Li- I don't want to launch it yet. Uh, we. We. We just getting our partnership in place right now. Well, well, yeah. It's. A, it's. It's, it's a global. It's a global. Tur- put it like this. It's a global one-on-one tournament. Okay, keep me posed because these big guys <laughs> think they big. And if you're a big guy, you can't back me down. Oh, that's you awful. Cause when I say I'll be having these big guys, they can't even back me down. That's how I spoke. <laughs> because I you I play football play though. Too. Huh? You play football though. Like you when you grew up, let's start when you grew up. Did you play every sport? Were you just an every sport athlete, baseball, basketball? Track, football, what do you I do? I only did football and track, that's it. But I started track in high school, though. You didn't even run track before high school? No, oh, no. See, that's what's wrong with Florida. That's what's wrong with Florida. I ain't know, Florida. About, I ain't know how to sign up and all that, because luckily my mom, my grandma signed me up for football at age six, because she was tired of watching me play football by myself. So. <laughs> you Were you good up. when you first stepped on the field? Well, they put me at. Offensive lineman, you know how when you first start football, they just put you somewhere, they did that, and then I still don't know to this day how I end up being a running back to this day, and the rest is history. What do you mean? Like, they, like they put me off in the line. Yeah. The following year, I'm at running back, and I, I still don't know how what happened between that, how I got that running back. Maybe they seen you run. Huh? Maybe they seen you run and was like, man, you got to put the ball in his hands. Man, I have no clue, but I did play defense, though, catching everybody. Are you fast because you're fast, or are you fast because you're scared to get hit? At that time, I was scared to get hit. <laughs> when I was younger, I was a crybaby. Softest cop. Really? What? That time, man, I was, when I say I was softest cotton, like I was a crybaby, boy. A uh, crybaby. I'm one of them people, uh, God did get bullied, but everybody got bullied once upon a time in their life. But me, if I did go to the park or basketball outside courts or something like that, either I got picked last or I didn't get picked at all. And if I didn't get picked at all, I'm crying right to my grandma's house, walking home crying. Were you just small, though? Was it because oh, you're the smallest out of everybody? Yeah, that's what I figured. It's just because you're small. Like I was small growing up. The small out of everybody, and they always 
just like when you've been a small bitch, you get picked at by everything, anything, all that stuff. Were you playing with the same age group or were you playing up an age group? Like you playing with older people or were you just were I was playing, playing with, with older people, people all the time at the park? Yeah. And that's what it is. You the youngest and you small. So and they always that's why. Hey, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, but it but what did that teach you? What did that teach you that you use now? Like Explain, explain. Like, what did, what did it teach you to go through the childhood, being picked last, doing all these different things, and now you would probably be one of the first picks? Like, did it motivate you when oh, you were no. picked last? Yeah. What happened in, inside you to say, you know, I don't ever want to feel this again? Or do you no. just not even think about it? Don't want to feel it again, one. And two, my goal, motivation, two. And three, all right, I'm going to do something to make your ass pick me first every damn time. <laughs> every time. Now, when you got to – you played you, – you said you ran track as a kid you, and you played football. Growing up, you get to high school. When did you decide to go to Florida? And what was the whole process like? Did you always want to go to Florida? Or were there any other teams that was close to getting you? What was that like to pick Florida uh, out of I, everywhere? The reason why I, you know the wrong, you want to know the real reason why I went, went to Florida. Hundred percent real reason why you went to Florida. Because I love alligators. <laughs> <laughs> you chose Florida because you love alligators. I love alligators and I love the colors of Florida too. Because I love orange one. Because our high school was orange. I, all the teams I then I played with had orange colors. Uh, yeah. And then I committed. The Florida, my sophomore year, because I already knew where I was going anyway. I ain't like all these people tricking and making uh, making all these decisions. No, I already knew where I was going, so I committed early. Committed your sophomore year? Yeah. So from the time you stepped on the field in high school, you was getting that work then? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, man. That's all they heard Talk about, about it. Yeah, part one. Man, I was scoring like five times, six times a game in part one. Was it just easy? Like from the first time you stepped on the field, pretty much, it, was football just easy for you? Easy, easy. And that's how, uh, but I did learn how to be patient in part one, though. My last couple of years, learn how to be patient at running back and stuff like that. And, and being selfish with the football, I stopped doing that. Never. Nope. Um, <laughs> I think my I think my sophomore junior year, no junior year, junior year in high school. Cause I always wanted to be the one to get the ball. Cause I always told myself I'll put the team on my back no matter what or whatever else. And and I want to just have records that ain't gonna never be beat. But you can't do that when you got a, a coach that respect the opponents. Take you out at halftime, you blowing the team out, or yeah. the first quarter, or stuff like that. Like you can't control that part. So, anything when people always talk about stats and then all this stuff, if I had a chance to play all four quarters all my high school career. Oh my god, that's like Jonathan Gray, man. He scored two hundred eight touchdowns with over eleven thousand yards rushing. Hold on, hold on. And you said what? Jonathan Gray in Texas, man. He had two hundred eight touchdowns. Over eleven thousand yards rushing. I think Derrick Henry's the one broke his record, but Jonathan never played past halftime until they got to the playoffs. He was always at the game by halftime. Yeah, that sounds like me. In playoff time, you'll probably play three quarters, maybe four, depending who you play. But his junior you know, year, he had uh, he had like thirty three carries for three hundred something and eight touchdowns. But guess how many carries I get? The state championship seven. game. How, guess how many carries I get? 79 carries a game. <laughs> Just imagine. Because oh, I yeah. know um, cause one young buck beat my rushing record because I had 2,500 with 79 carries all the time. But he was getting 40 carries a game. First of all, you better beat my record. Second of all, if I had 40 carries. <laughs> 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 But but think of all the punishment it saved you to allow you to go on to college 
And then man, you made your choice. High school was so damn easy. It was ridiculous. Well, that's in Florida. You should have went to Texas. <sighs> Florida's like playing on we, uh, you know, listen, like normal. We play all we play all Miami teams. Them all the hard teams to play in Florida. Miami that's why Central. Most all the teams, that's why most of all the teams that scared to play Miami team. One, they 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 basically think they thugs. Two, they scared of the the fans and the crowds down there, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. That's why we don't play down there, but we will play them up in our stadium. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it just it just Miami. All the Miami teams are the tough teams to play. Well, when you when you committed your sophomore year to go to Florida, after your senior season, how long did it take you to get to Florida? Like, when you, did you go? Did you graduate early, or did you get to Florida at the beginning of the summer? No, I or did you wait till the fall to go to? Or did you wait till the fall to go to Florida? Did you go work out with them? Like during the summer, did you go to summer workouts? Or did you just go in the in the fall, in the uh, two days? Well, well, when I committed my sophomore year, after every game on Friday, as soon as the game over, go take a shower, jump in my car, go straight to Gainesville for the next two, three years. And just, I, mean, I basically was on campus before I was on campus. Because I had a lot of friends <laughs> on the football team one and a lot of friends on the basketball team, all chilling with space, all all them kind of people. Uh, how was that though? How was that just just being in high school, being on the university in, in Gainesville, Florida? Like, can you is it not hard to handle that situation? Being oh. 15, 16 years old, being on the being on the college campus with everybody. No, because um, cause when I was in high school, I, I was living with my mama when she got out of prison. I was living with her for a couple of years before I moved with the Pouncey twins. Uh, and my mom at the time, she stayed across the street from my high school. And it was a college right next door, too. And me, just like you said, 15, 16, I was on that campus, too. I had some friends on the basketball team or uh, a uh, baseball team, a uh, volleyball team, or whatever, and all that kind of stuff. And I was going to the clubs with them at age 14, 15, 16 years old. I didn't even have to use my ID because they knew who I was at Lakeland, and they just let me in. So, And plus, I didn't drink or smoke, so that made it even better. So yeah. it, it, it wasn't nothing. Nothing new. It just, I was just having fun. That's all it is. just felt like I was shows- too early. But it shows something like, like, you know, to be in that atmosphere, to not create those bad habits of drinking and smoking. And I only say bad habits at that age. You know, I drink, I don't smoke, but I drink, but I don't think it's a bad habit. It's an intensifier of life. But, um, you know, you didn't create those. That's, that's pretty cool. Like, oh, no, because my grandma was an alcoholic and smoked cigarettes all my life and i always told myself i would never ever come when when she got drunk oh my god she was the devil she was the devil but the cigarettes no mm-hmm. oh, like cigarettes all my life going to school this and that and all this stuff i just couldn't do it so so you we have your dog we got your grandma that that smoked and and drank all the time and created it's almost like most people, they say, when you try not to be something, you end up turning into it because you're focused on not being it. Yeah. How have you? How have you defied those odds of seeing these things and be like, you know what, I'm not going to do it, and then actually didn't do it? No, you got to change the cycle. Because when you – everybody start in a family, and you see all the cycles, especially in the black family, compared to white families. And you're like, man – and then when you see TV and all that, and they show you what life supposed to be or something like that, the fairy tale and all that other kind of shit, and you just start pitching all kind of stuff and you hear from movies and all that kind of stuff. So you're like, you know what? I'm trying to change the cycle or something. Like, you n- notice that black people don't get married. Uh, uh, black people don't have good credit. Uh, all kind of stuff. Black people always in apartments, not in the real house. Oh, like you see all this shit. You be like, man, bitch, I'm trying to change the cycle. I ain't trying to be like this. Hundred percent. So, when you look at your life now, 
and and go back to when you were growing up are you where you thought you would be or where you want to be are you happy with where you're at oh uh, I say probably about 93, 94% where I wanted to be at. Cause the the six, seven percent, yeah. I thought I was gonna be living in a mansion because NFL money or uh, me telling myself my goal is if I do have kids, I'm gonna have it with one person, not another person involved too. Or uh, yeah, that's probably my two things that. I didn't achieve on other than that. I did everything I was supposed to. Yeah. Being at Florida, uh, being a freshman All-American in track, like how'd that feel? Being on campus, you get some playing time, you become a freshman All-American on the on on the track. How was that? How was that whole process juggling football and track at the oh, same time cool. in college? Oh, that was hard. At that yeah. school. Oh, that was hard because one, I knew the um the head coach from high school, because that's when I first met him, because they always have this sort of relay that's for all the hold on. But my son played too damn much, boy. My bad. Excuse <laughs> my language. He played too damn much. But um yeah, that was that was hard because I know I see probably about 10 football players tried out for track, but they all quit. And I say me, Jeff, and uh, Frank Hammond. We're the only three that lasted. I almost quit too, because when I say that, that was hard. <laughs> but I was like, I knew we had a chance to win a championship in two different sports. So that's why I stayed. I took yeah, the risk. Because what you won the SEC championship, what was it, 2009 or 2008? Yeah, and you won the national championship in 2009. And then in 2010, you won the national championship in track. So three straight years, you were winning championships at Florida and a two-time first-team All-American. Yeah, that's how you like, uh, make – go ahead, my yeah. bad. No, I'm just saying that's that's a that's a lot. <laughs> when I say I almost quit for that – Man, that jump wasn't no joke, boy. Especially at a school like that. But I just said I gotta sacrifice if I want to make history, cause you don't really see football players or athletes do multiple sports in college and Super stay hard doing to be it. One. Yes, it is. Yes, it you is. You know, I tell I tell my kids all the time, like the kids I train, I tell them all the time, say, you know, when you're in peewee football. You just play football. Middle school, you just play football. High school, friends get cars, girls come important. So now you're a little bit away from football or things can take you away from football. There's mm -hmm. parties and different things. But when you get mm -hmm. to college, you ain't got nobody to wake you up. You ain't got nobody to tell you what to do. You got to be self-controlled to go and do. Like, if you want to go to that party, you can go to that party. But it's so much, it's so demanding just to play one sport. For you to play probably the toughest, like track is hard. Like you just run. That junk. It, <laughs> it's worse than the, the practice is worse than football. It, what was your worst man. track practice? What was the hardest track practice you went through? Do you remember? Because they always me, I'm a short distance runner. So they yeah. always made me do long distance run. Oh my god. 400, 500, 10 sets of 200. Man, who do this job? <laughs> like, I'm not a long distance runner. It's for long distance, man. That jump was, cause you know, you know how um some days at football, you lay on the ground, you be like, damn, boy, I made it through that one, boy, but my body is dead, man. Ten times worse than track, boy. You how do you imagine? All that, and it's hot outside that, too. You be like, man, shit, I quit, cause I can quit, cause I still got football, but I couldn't do it. I had to stay. And plus, I love that coach too for track too, so. Leaving Florida, oh, who'd you hang out with in Florida? What was your group, or did you, or was you a loner there too? You say you mentioned you stay with the Ponzi brothers. Did you hang out with them, or you just you pretty oh, much no. stay solo? Oh, all the football players always together, yeah. always together, and certain people on the track team with me all together too. 
at certain points of the time, but mostly in trap. But um, but no, yeah, we was always together because I had a girlfriend during college at the time, but she lived off campus. Most of the time I stay over there, but when I'm on campus, we are always together, everybody, all the whole football team. When I said we was always together, basketball is a part parties, clubs, uh, basketball games, baseball games, volleyball games, swim. Man, we was always together. That's how close that team was. Yeah. How you feel about the Aaron Hernandez situation? Do you, do you, it's weird you know, as hell. I mean, as a personal friend and as somebody who know him, like, was it shocking to you to just hear all that? Man, he because he's a good dude. Good yeah, dude. That's, that's what I heard. Person. That's one dude you would love to have on your side. Football and as a friend. So and all the other stuff. And anything can happen. Or uh, sometimes hang with the wrong people can be a bad thing. Cause just like I said, you can't control the NFL draft. Like he got drafted to a team that was literally what an hour, two hours from his hometown. Yeah. Some, sometimes you got to get away from your hometown. You got to separate sometimes, yourself. Yeah. You know, sometimes you want to be close to your hometown. You never know. Anything can happen. But, yeah. You know, but at the end, I think he did it for his kid. You think he killed himself for his kid? Oh, no doubt. How I know him, no doubt. Was it, I mean, that's just a shocking situation. And when you look at all the brain trauma he had and everything that, you know. Hey, man, did you watch the documentary? Don't have did you watch the documentary? All, yeah, all those football players don't have that no matter what. It can be small, it can be big. All of us <laughs> don't have it. Because when I say I forget a lot of junk, my girl be like, well, how you forget that fast? I'm like, man, I don't <laughs> <laughs> See, I forget stuff too, but I still remember lyrics. I remember plays from Calgary, but I... <laughs> hey, we know we, we remember that football stuff. But other than that... <laughs> you remember every song? I start singing Usher right now. You probably know every word, word for word. Won't have no, won't miss a line. <laughs> but yeah, no, because I was just wondering about that because it's a whole mentality around everything and I didn't know if, if people that actually knew him would watch that and then you see do you know Antonio Brown personally uh, like yeah but what, like what he was kind of going through last year and it's almost like well you know somebody's got to just say you know somebody's got to be in you can't just be a yes man around certain people you know you got to be somebody that can really try to help because I but, see somebody yeah. spiraling like that you you just you should want to step in and help the thing, about the thing about football players in general, period, they be having some good-ass people around them, good friends and this and that. But when that money involved, but they they change. Yeah. And they different. Mm -hmm. And then your real good friends just be scared to, uh, to just try to help or uh, uh, get involved or something because one minute you that football player is going to think you're trying to do something or or trying to get money or it could be any anything, but it just – it's hard to explain that, John, man. It's it just crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. When you got drafted in the fifth round by Pittsburgh, did you think you were going to go higher? Were you surprised you went fifth round? And then when oh, did you no, figure out you were going to Pittsburgh? Uh -uh. Cause I knew I got in trouble in college, so you know how that is when you get in trouble. And I don't care if it's a little thing, big thing, whatever. You get in trouble one time, that's just an automatic red flag, no matter what. You know how NFL goes. If you, we football players, we watch the draft all the years before us, and this and that, and all that. You see, you learn all that kind of stuff. But no, I want shot. I'm just blessed that I reached my goal too, and the money ain't. Gonna change me because I seen money at the casino. It's the same damn thing. Shit. Yeah. So, do you gamble? Oh, uh, used to, but I do it every now. But I used to, but you bet days. on games? Oh no 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 no. Just 
Just that when you play home. craps or roulette, you look like a roulette. I think a lot of Florida boys play roulette. They do, but blackjack. You play blackjack? Yep. Man. So going fifth round to the Pittsburgh Steelers, what was it like when you walked in that locker room? What was the what was you can you remember back then and, and just thinking your thoughts like I'm going here to make a team, but I'm seeing people. Um was Ponzi there then? When you got oh, there? Yeah, yeah. He was there? I think he was there already. Well, because one left 09, then the other one left 2010, then I was still there in Florida yeah. 11. Yeah. So he was already there two years because he went to the Super Bowl and they lost to Green Bay. That yeah, and that was uh no, I just say I'm finally here because he was him and Ike Taylor. Yep. Because well, I used to train with Ike Taylor in Orlando at Worldwide mm-hmm. Sports. Well, on John Groom quarterback camp jump be at. Yep. So I was, used to train there. That's where everybody used to train coming out of college. All the, I guess the best athletes or something. But, yeah, um, when I got there, I'm just saying I'm finally here now. Just don't F up, get an apartment, do what you got to do, and make tea. So that was that because I had mad companies come in. Uh, only way you can get your second contract is you do what you're supposed to do and you got to ball and out on the field. So that's what that's how it was. Cause did they tell you you're going to be a strictly returner or did they tell you you're going to get in on offense? What was the what, what was their message to you when you were coming out and what did you what did you want to do? When you were coming, oh no, nah, they no, they they got me as a running back, and yep. they, and, you, and you try all this other stuff at practice, then see did return, did the uh, third down back, uh, and did other special teams like kickoff, uh, gunner, all I did all that, and when you and when you kill that practice, you gonna get in the game. So I say. My third preseason game, that was my chance to try to return. Yeah. So at meetings all week, we going and we getting ready for uh, Car- uh, uh, Carolina Panthers because they, they've they been the weakest special team <laughs> football team ever. And coach always talked about it and all that stuff. So he was like, Rainy, you got first quarter. You know how they – when you're a rookie yeah. – you got this quarter, quarter. this quarter. So they were like, Randy, you got first quarter. And looking at film, I'm like, I might do something this game. (laughs) Okay. But then again, during the preseason game, every game, every time I walked in the football stadium, I just looked around like, I am really in the NFL. (laughs) So go back to the Carolina Council. First quarter. Uh Uh-oh. Chris Randy, it's your time. Get a punt return. Get that big, run that big back. So I was like, oh, shit, I just scored on the part return because I already scored on um, – um, I scored on the screen the second preseason game, and I scored on the running play the first preseason game. So nine special teams. So I scored on that one. Okay. They just turned the ball over. I just scored. They just turned the ball over. Now, now uh, I'm going back out there for another return. Tell me I ran this bitch back again within one minute. Two punt returns ran back, but they called both of them back though. So when I ran uh, the second one, when they ran when I ran the one, uh, second one back, I went to coach uh, coach Mike Tumner said, Hey coach, did I make team yet? And he slapped me on the butt <laughs> <laughs> and then bust out laughing. <laughs> Man, I love Coach hey, Mike Thompson. Hey, That's a real, yeah. real dude, boy. I love him. You, you like, hey, you can't penalize me. I, I did my job. I ran it back. You can't penalize me for him holding over there. <laughs> hey, but that, hey, that's a real deal coach, boy. That, I love that coach, man. He just got a three-year extension, which is awesome. You know, I saw that, yeah. Setting the standards, man. But then you left Pittsburgh. What happened? Oh, after the first year. Him. He said, if it'll up me, I'll be still there. But you know how that Rudy, Rudy family, whatever that jump, the, whatever, the Rooney rule, something like yeah. that. That shit was true. It, 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 what, what can you do? What can you do? But they did watch me like a hawk, though. They, 
they even said it when I first came in the, um, on the team and all that. We're going to watch it like a hawk. They did do that, though. What do you mean I, by that? The way, did they follow you around? They how to PI? The way I the way I ate, make sure I ain't getting in trouble. This and that. Cause just like I said, when you come out of college, you got the red flag and all that. Yeah. They want to make sure you, this and that. They did watch me like a hawk. If I went to the casino, they knew. If I won, so did they all, hire a private investigator to follow you and and uh, things? No, or? But um, the um, man, what them people call that be? That be on the football teams on every team. The player, the player, what is that? The player, player person. reps, the yeah, player personnel. Player. Yeah. So, see, they made oh, uh, it got to the point they made me ban myself from the casino. They made you ban yourself. How they ban? It make you ban yourself. Okay. Uh, find out. Mike family friend with the owner of the casino. Because it man, it's so boring, Pittsburgh, Virginia, but it's beautiful at nighttime because all the lights yeah. and bridges light up and stuff. But it was so boring, though. Only thing I did on Mondays and Thursdays go to the casino because it was Monday night football and Thursday night football because I went with a couple of players and stuff like that. But, um, them and Tuesdays, I think I went to the school club, but other than that, they don't know about that part. but Monday and Thursday, <laughs> I was, you know, but I, this one, I was killing the casino with the years and all that stuff. But yeah, he called me in the office, talked to him heart to heart, and he'll tell me about his best friend, how he um had gambling problems or something like that. And he was in the hole, he owed, he owed money, this and that, lost his house, all that kind of stuff. This might tell him to talk to me, tell me about his best friend. So that's when he told the player rep to take me to the casino, ban myself. <laughs> so while I was banning myself, the people asked me, do you want to ban yourself for a year or in terms of, <laughs> I said a year, bitch, I ain't going to ban myself in no way. <laughs> for my whole entire life. Hell no, nah, bitch, because it's so boring in this city. Hell no. Nah. So just like I said, the city is boring as hell. So I was like, man, I don't got nothing to do. You know what? I'm finna drive to another city to go to the casino. Else did y'all. I thought I was in another city. <laughs> and I was just right, right before you get out this out the um the state. Yeah, I'm going to another state. It wasn't that far. And I thought I was out of state, but I wasn't. And um nope. So I'm at the I'm in, I'm in the casino. I'm winning. I'm at step what 12,000 or 17,000. I get a tap oh. on my shoulder. I look, he was like, You Chris Rain? I'm like, Yeah, yeah. Can you come with me? So I got up, walked with him. I was like, Oh, hold on, hold on, let me get my money. They be like, No, I'll leave that right there. So we went to the back. I got a citation. Cause you know you I banned myself and all that stuff. You're not allowed in the casino, all that stuff. So I had yeah. got a citation, this and that. So when they gave me the citation, I had to leave and all that. And I was like, you didn't oh, get the money. Hold on, let me get my money. What my money at? No, uh, you can't get that. Not allowed to get that. I said, What? So where my money go to? And then they said it goes somewhere. It don't go back to the it don't go. But it you didn't get your money back. When I say it was like 12, 17, man, can't get nothing. But I'm talking about even the money that you just initially put into it. Man, that's get, crazy. Got the citation, all of that. And, um, when I got it, oh, yeah. And then another thing they told me, don't do, don't go back to Gainesville. They told me not mm. to go back because that's why I got trouble at the first time in college. So, but at, at that time, my girlfriend was going to, hold on. All right. My family say I'm, I was worse than them. No, I don't believe that. When I say my kids are <laughs> hyper from as soon as they wake up to as soon as they, the sun go down to go to sleep to go to school. Like, it's ridiculous hyper. I'm talking about to the mass. Like, oh my God, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all taking drugs or something? That's how bad it is. <laughs> but go back to what but, I was saying. Um, yeah, they told you not to go to Gainesville. So when I got that citation, I'm like, 
and it, it ended up being off season then. So my apartment that I was staying at that time was in Gainesville. My girlfriend at the time was in Gainesville and she was going to med school. So and then she said, Do you want me to come to ask me to come to it was called a med ball? That's how they call their homecoming a prom with type stuff for med school kids, students. So I promise her I'll go. I'm in Gainesville. Oh Lord. Uh what happened? In Gainesville. I was set to go to Vegas with a bunch of my teammates with the Steelers. One morning, I had to get up at 7 a.m. I was getting my girlfriend at the time a hug and a kiss, and she felt my second phone. That's because I'm going to tell you why I got the a bad phone. Second, That's the bad phone. When I got to, when I got in the, uh, in Lee, uh, Ike Taylor was my um my locker roommate. Yep. And he he said, "Man, you need to get a, a second phone." I said, "Why you need to get a second phone?" Oh, and yeah, he'll, he'll tell you you want you want one for your work, family, then you want one for the hoes. So I I, I, tried, phone. I tried that. <laughs> that that's, at, that's at the beginning. Of, that's be I'm, I'm gonna get to the end, we'll go back to the store, but this is how I started. Get the bad phone. I make it all the way through the season. I had that bitch hid. I had the hit in the trunk with a spare tie yet. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you that's why you used to hide that bitch at. I made it through the whole year. So that go back to when I was leaving to go to Vegas. So that morning. Give my girl at the time a hug and kiss. She felt that bad phone. So she was like, Chris, what's that? I was like, what you mean, what's that? I was like, oh, they're my kids. She was like, no, nah, they ain't no kids. That felt like a phone. I don't know what you're talking about. So she, listen, she in a pink robe. She butt-ass naked under this robe. All she got on is a robe. So she backing up. I was like, I'm trying to tell you, these are on the kids. So I'm like, man, she she really trying to see what's in my pocket. I run out the back door. She started chasing me. I'm like, oh hell no, she she really trying. To... So I run around the house like three times. She's still behind me. So I'm like, Cause you know, fast. I got time to dish the phone, with this and, that and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, she ain't stopping. So she still chasing me. So I was like, you know what? I got to dish this phone. So I dished the phone, hit it behind one of them little, them little, um. The meter things? Yeah, them little things that be on the side of the buildings. Yeah. So I hit it behind that, and I stopped in the middle of the road, and I said, and she finally caught up with me. She was like, Chris, what's that in your pocket? I'm like, I pulled it out. It was my key, because I replaced it, put my keys in there. I said, I told you some damn key. What the hell are you talking about? She was like, no, I don't believe that. I know what the hell I felt and all this kind of stuff. So I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't want to give I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm for the lead. You want to hug you this and that? No. So she just sitting right there, standing there, ain't saying nothing. So I get in the car. I pull next to her. I said, you ain't going to say bye or nothing like this? She all mad and all that kind of stuff. I was like, all right. All right, bye then. So I pulled out. I'm about to. I'm about to leave. So I'm going down the street. I was like, man, I need that phone since I'm going to Vegas. This is going to be my last weekend, and I'm going to get rid of this phone. This is going to be my last weekend. I'm going to get rid of this bitch. I like, I can't leave it. So I turned around. You can't leave the bad phone there anyway because she's going to search for it. If I she thinks if she think it's on the property, she's going she gonna to find it. <laughs> I, I turned around. I came in, pulled next door. I said, so you really ain't gonna say nothing. You ain't gonna say bye, this and this. All right, fuck it. I don't, I don't got time for this. You about to make me late. So I left again. Down the street, went to the light. You around. hope you went in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I turned around, I passed the street to see if she's still right there. She's still right there. So I went to the next street over. Went down the street, went around the block. I parked down the block, got out the car, walked up the street. And she's still standing right there. I'm hiding behind the fence right now at the moment. And looking, she's still right there. So I'm like, oh, shit. 
So I see some dude at the bus stop. So I'm like, hey, excuse me. Hey, hey, can you do me a big favor? It's a phone behind a little thing over there. Can you get it for me? You see the little green thing? Can you get that for me? Man. And I was like, make sure she don't see you. Make sure you don't let her see you or whatever. So he went over there. He picked up the phone. She was like, hey, what are you doing? What did you just pick up? Man, this nigga walked to her because he was scared to death. You know, one of the white nerdy guys. Scared yeah. to death. So he went because she had a tone in her voice when she was screaming. He went to her, gave her the phone. She took off running. Bitch, I took off running to the car, get the car, pulled in front of the damn house. She came out nice and dressed. Remember, she was butt naked under this road. Yeah. Road open naked. You didn't have so, no uh, security lock on there or nothing? Oh, no, no. Because this is a um, little apartment complex. It's small as hell. No, I'm though. talking it's about like on probably. the phone. No, that's the reason why I, was, I, I ain't want uh, her to get it because they ain't have no lock on it because I knew I wasn't going to get caught. Bitch, that's why I was like, because she looking at bitch is <laughs> bitch is over. So when I pulled in front of the um the house, she was coming out full dressed in her male clothes and all that stuff, trying to get in her tr- her Hummer. The Hummer wouldn't crank up because I think she left the lights on and all that other stuff. So my cousin at the time working, he get off at like like seven. Have you missed your flight by this time? Uh uh-uh, uh, no, because I'm supposed to good? pick up my brother first and then oh. go to the flight. Uh, so my cousin get out of work, he pulled in, see us y- yelling at each other and all that. She put the book bag, her book bag. So we tussing over the book bag back and forth. Because I told her I ain't going to let go of the book bag. She ain't going to let go of the book bag. Uh, I didn't know she already looked in the phone, but she told me did down the road. Um, so we touched no, my cousin get out of the car. What y'all doing this and that and all the other stuff? But the girl next door ended up calling the police and ended up telling the car she saw me hit her and all the other stuff and this and that, all that. But uh, so we, I ain't get the phone. So I, I got mad. So I went in the house, got all her clothes, threw them downstairs. Uh, what happened? I did that, then I came back out. No, I came to the door, then I saw the cops there. And she talked to the cops and all the other stuff. And so I'm like, you know what? Let me just leave, fuck it. So I got my stuff, my key, and just walked out, walked past, act like I ain't know these people, and just walked to the car. Walked to the car, the cops said, hey, are you Chris? I'm like, yes, sir, this and that. Hold on, hold on for a second. This and that, then he came talk to me, and this and then, you know how, at this time, this one, the Ray Rice was going on, and they changed yeah. the law. And so if they get caught with domestic violence, somebody got to go to jail, this and that, and all the other stuff. <laughs> so, so I'm talking to the cops. They go in the huddle. They start talking to each other. I'm sitting on the trunk, this and that. And all, even though my girl told them nothing happened, I told them nothing happened. They in the huddle, talking to each other. Then they surrounded me and put me in handcuffs and the rest is history. And then that's when I got released two hours later after I got arrested. Cause I was, I told my cousin to call Mike Tumley on the phone to tell him what's going to happen, this and that and all the other stuff. So but he had to tell him you was in Gainesville too. Cause it going cause you already know when you when you get handcuffs on your bitch, you already know if it'll go across ESPN on the bottom. Bitch, the whole world yeah. know, bitch. And cause you know when you get arrested, they tell you what city you in, this and that, and all the other bitch. Yep, that's how that's how that went. All that for oh, damn second phone. That's why my girl was like, oh, like people always talk about two phones, a second phone. Bitch, I was like, bitch, I will never get a second phone ever in my life again. See, I never had a second phone, but that's you know y'all y'all living on the edge, man. No, I remember I, one time. <laughs> Hold on, hold I mean, on. I listen to an NFL player. What you mean? I'm a rookie. I'm listening to an NFL player. He's been I here remember, for years. Man, I gave somebody who left their bag and um, we're on a road trip. And they told me, hey, grab my bag out of my room tonight. I'm staying and give it to my wife. I gave the bag to the wife at the airport. She at the airport waiting. I guess didn't get the memo. That he wasn't coming. 
Man, a bat thrown in the bag. I'm like, you could at least told me. I would have took it out or something for you. Mm. <laughs> I, it, and you in a different city. Ain't nothing you do about it at this point. Yeah. That's the that's the first thing you supposed to do if you know that's the um thing. You said give it to your wife. You know, but that's that, you know, that's that bad that bad phone, man. Come with bad intentions. You get hey, you, you're not even supposed to take the bat phone in the house though. Because most no, I'm not even gonna tell you what most people do because people listening and I, <laughs> I was <gonna> say, <laughs> you know, most people they don't hey that bat phone never touch that house and never go past a certain distance to the house. Mm-hmm. That's what had my than Trump right by the spell tire. <laughs> now everybody's listening to this. All of them gonna be hey, looking for that second got, phone. We keeping it real, dog. We keeping it real. Hey, I got everybody looking for that second phone. phone. We keeping yeah. it real, dog. But then when you headed to headed to Canada, what did you think going to Montreal? What no, did you think um, your first experience to Canada? I mean, on, I know after um, that you went to uh, Indianapolis and you went to the Cardinals. That's how I find out about Canada. Oh, okay. Well, tell them about that. Um, man, what's that? Um, what's that linebacker with the number fifty? For in that because his last name was Freeman. Gerald Freeman. Gerald Freeman. Yeah, he because he said he came from Canada because he was up in Canada before he came in a field. Nice too. And he told me about that John. He was like, Chris, man, if you ever get done and, and you want to keep playing, go to Canada and all that. Because he was telling me about the field, how big the field is, this and that, and all that kind of stuff and all that. So when stuff happened over there, I'm at the house. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do what Freeman told me. I'm going to go up there, check it out, try to get film, this and that, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So when I got when I got there, went to Montreal, and, you know, it, football is totally different compared to coaches up there, the coaches down here. It, yeah. It, like, sometimes you, don't, sometimes you don't think – you don't think the coaches know talent. If you understand what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, you know, and and you know, to to the credit of the coaches, I'll say this: being on the coaching side in 2019, um, sometimes it's trying to find the right fits, and it's not always the best talent. Yeah, right? that, and that, and that a lot too. of coaches, and a lot of coaches don't get their way either, right? As a running back coach, I can sit here and say who I want to play or who I want to start or who I want to do whatever, but doesn't mean it's going to happen. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of people that that pull the trigger and make decisions, and you know you just got to rock with it as a coach. I but see as a coach though, I have to implement uh, the the ability in my of my players to still be ready. Right. I have to get them ready to play the game. I got to give them confidence in what they're doing, right? Even with uh, John White and Brandon Rutley, you know, I said, I don't care who we, we need both, right? And we win in games without one or the other. And I was like, well, you got two two backs that are older that are still so dynamic. They don't need 20 carries each. But 12 carries a piece, they dangerous. You know what I'm saying? So now this is where you, this is where you get into those modes. But, you know, it's, it's, Especially in the CFL, it's harder when you have the – you got to suit up so many Canadians and you can only have this. And we have a key Canadian go down and, you know, or, you know, then you got to start American there. So then it takes an American off the – and then they're, they're always going to take off a backup American, even though I felt like both of those backs were starting tailbacks. Mm-hmm. Right? So then somebody's going to suffer, but at the end of the day, you know, it's not really about, I don't, I think we went with both of them. Right. So, you know, just to the credit of the coaches, right now, all coaches are not like that. All coaches, you know, some coaches, you know, don't care, but you know, I obviously my relationship with players, I just came from playing. I have a, you know, a more personable relationship with a lot of the players and teammates that I had. And, you know, me and Rutt being teammates in Montreal for three years. So yeah, it, it is a little different though. Mm-hmm. I never played in the NFL, so you know I turned down twelve teams, and when I got offered in two thousand six to stay in Canada, yeah, okay. NFL ain't is it the same as like it's the same as 
all other football. It ain't no different. Yeah. It's just super faster. That's the only difference. Other than that, you think the NFL's football. faster? Yeah. It, 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 yeah. Yeah. What makes you think the NFL's faster? No, just put it like this: SEC and NFL are the same as that, same as that, in every which way. But uh, any other different? Nothing. Cause you got you think it's you think it looks faster because the field's smaller. I mean, the NFL is a more downhill league. There's not a lot of holes anymore because safeties can cover so much ground. No, right. everybody balls in the air, they're everybody. covering ground. So you know how like on all football teams growing up is every is a lot of areas that slow. Ain't no areas that slow in NFL. Every you know, Chad Ocho said he thought the inner, um, CFL was faster and Ricky Williams too. Right? Uh, because Ricky Williams, I remember the first time he took the handoff, he tried to break it outside, and dudes was hawking him. Like he couldn't. I mean, he only had like 300 yards rushing in, in nine or 10 games because he had broke his wrist as well. But, and then he goes back to the NFL and puts up 1,600. Man. It's a different, it's a different game. Man, it, 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 but I was it, just wondering what, what makes you think it's faster when everybody plays a skill down. So like you look at a Micah Johnson who played middle linebacker for the Dolphins and now he's one of the best D tackles in the CFL, but never played D line before his whole life. Man, that, you know what? I'm gonna take that back because it's tricky. It is tricky. It's tricky. It could be field size, but guys cover it, ground so well now. In the NFL, the safeties are covering ground. It's if the ball's in the air for longer than two seconds, it's there's so many things that can happen now. You can't do that in the CFL. <laughs> no. You have to use two safeties for the CFL. You played in Montreal, Toronto, and BC. What's your what's your favorite place to live in? Oh, Vancouver because it's spread spread out. Because Montreal yeah. is too crowded, it's too crowded, and the French talking. You you eat Chinese don't... food in Montreal? Eat Chinese I food in Montreal. Live, yeah. I know they live over there. They got the Asian market right there, right across from the Candlewood Suites. No, I ain't never. Um, mm -mm. no. So I always went to the. I forgot what the damn market. What store that how, was? How do you feel about getting cut in Montreal the day after you pay for everybody to go to the movie theater? No, I already know what the reason was for. I mean, well, what was the reason for? Because I missed a block. I do juke the hell out of me and <laughs> hit the quarterback. Because one thing about the run, that's my only time I gave up a set. My only time I gave up a set. And when that happened, I was like, hell no, this the pro, because I ain't give up no second in NFL. I ain't give up no second college or Little League, Pop Warner, or um, high school. And that's why when I came to BC, but y'all, hey, bitch, you ain't never seen me give up a set. Uh uh. That was my only time giving up a set. One, because he juked the hell out of me. Because it's, first of all, two professional players going against each other. That's, yep. I got you, and I feel, and what can I do? And he hit the quarterback. So looking at that with Jim Pop, looking at that after the fact, I scored a touchdown in that game, but it's always protecting the quarterback come first anyway. So. I thought that was the most talented backfield I've ever seen in my life. Hey, I mean, we, Brandon Whitaker, Terrell Sutton, Brandon Rutley, you, Steph Logan, Jewel Hampton. Like, nobody really knows about Jewel Hampton, but Jewel Hampton was a, a beast. Man, he didn't like nobody, the, but – We had all of them. I remember in training camp, everybody was like, let me get a rep. No, 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 you ain't getting this. <laughs> Wasn't nobody giving them no reps. <laughs> It was like, good luck picking who's going to win this. Hey, tell me about it, boy. Well, we'll suit up too, boy. But I, that's why I knew that for a fact. And plus, making it even uh, having a uh, girl in your 
at the time too. So that probably made yeah. it more. So looking forward, 2021 season is supposed to start in August. What are you thinking? Think you're gonna have a season? And if you do, how are you feeling about your chances of of competing in the West? Oh, this I, now I can say I'm going to the Great Cup finally. That's all I can say about this year. I'm going to the Great Cup finally because I got a quarterback I can play with besides Lule, but he got hurt a lot, so he couldn't couldn't end up playing with him for a long period of time. But I finally got a a quarterback that's rock solid. Do you want to do less on offense or do you want to do more on offense? Like, how do you feel? Like, as you get older, do you want to be a specialist on as a specialist returner or do you want to still be just as effective on offense? I just want – I always tell all the coaches, I just want to help win. That's it. Help win. So however you can Whatever help. you put me at, I'm going to help win. You have the record for punt blocks in a, in college at, at Florida. Man, I probably got, what, two chances to try to go block, but – as soon as would you I ever consider would you ever consider doing it in the CFL? If let's say they said, okay, somebody else is gonna return this week or somebody else gonna return this one, Chris, we want you I to try. block. I try. And then them two times I did, red flags all jumped up, but they double teamed. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever blocked a field goal? Oh uh, yeah, I did, did it against Montreal and I did it on my own too, because uh just like you said, when you watch film and all of that stuff, you know who is who and who is weak and certain stuff. So, like, when you watch film through the week, you're like, man, you know what? Because I always, I always tell the players beforehand, be, before I do stuff, so they can be on the same page if I do do it. Like, like corners that come off the edge and stuff on bump blocks and all that. I always tell them, hey. You can't come off both edges. Yeah, hey, I'll, no, I'll just tell them, hey, hey, um, at practice, I always talk to them. Hey, if I come down here, you go catch punt because I um, I have them come catch punch too during practice to have feeling of it too. If we do switch and I don't get it, so like when we did it month raw, I said, hey, I got a feeling about this. Go back, so I got on edge, went around that bitch and blocked it, and um, Gator picked up it. And took it into for a house before halftime, uh, at halftime, and all that stuff. So me watching yeah, all that stuff, but they really can't do block stuff because man, people they be scared to death when they see me down there too. Even on uh, field goal blocks, they'll leave, they'll leave the gap open just to block me. Okay, he gonna do that, bitch. You better be ready and go through that gap. That's it. So you got to draw the team. Everybody, but everybody don't come off the ball like me. So it's just hard to do anything, actually. Because when I say, when I see the the tip of the ball just move like that, bitch, I'm gone. With with missing this year, you say you want to play three or four more years. Is there anything that could make you play longer or shorter? If it's the, if it keep going on like this, you do you feel like if you have, you know, some success or your success falls off, you still gonna keep playing? Like, what's the what's the what makes you walk away from the game? Great cup. I can't leave. I can't leave till I get a great cup towel, and then I'll be done. Go to I'll Calgary. Huh? Go to Calgary. Hey. I got a chance. To go. <laughs> I, I got a chance with BC with the quarterback. I got now. Nah, I got a chance because yeah, if I, I like get Mike, that, I'm going. Great I'm going because I need a championship at every level. That's just my goal. That's one of my goals. Well, I hope you reach your goal, brother. Thank you for coming on. It's been awesome. You got any last parting words for everybody? Hey, right. stay safe, stay healthy. It's dangerous in this world. Dangerous outside. The young kids are different these days. Keep your kids in the house. I don't care if it's <laughs> but it just it just uh just picture a prison at the house. That, that's how you teach them to stay out of prison. Shit, keep them in the house 24 7. Maybe you got some stand-up comedian uh 
Uh, you can be a stand up when you're done. I wish I could if I talk right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't talk good enough to do that. Hey, somebody listen to you. <laughs> you got the James Harden beard over there. Hey, hey. I only reason why I keep a beard so people won't ask me for my ID because I got a baby face on the hill. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you stopping through, brother. Anytime. It's been another episode of the Lulu Logic Podcast, and we out. Sure.